My name is Burt Bowers, former employee of Tetra Tech. Before that, former employee of New World Environmental, uh, radiation safety officer at the Hunters Point Naval Shipyard. And you were here today, you're coming into San Francisco to be honored by the Society of Professional Journalists as a whistleblower. Why did you become a whistleblower at these sites? I was obligated to do that as part of my profession. Uh, working at licensee sites, uh, i.e. licensed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, we're, we're expected to adhere to a federal form, a document referred to as NRC Form 3. You can look it up on the internet. It states what you're supposed to do if you identify a safety concern dealing with NRC licensed sites. I was simply doing my job to begin with, became ostracized, uh, exhausted all the remedies uh, to pursue through my employer, through the NRC, at which point I sought legal representation to the point we are at today. And what does it say about the fact that the regulatory agencies, OSHA, NRC, there are all these whistleblowers here and apparently there was no protection for them who came forward and tried to do their job and tell the truth that they were dangerous and falsifications? Uh, ten years later, after all this began, I'm of the opinion based on uh, what's come to light in the public eye involving the NRC and determinations of a federal license being revoked and the decision, preliminary decision, to not rescind that license. I think of a, a, a few minor glaring problems. Number one, the NRC, I'm told, has never rescinded an NRC license in its entire history. Number two, this occurrence almost a decade later would indicate, should they do that, indicate they were wrong 10 years ago. So to do that, uh, how would that make the NRC look? But also number three, if that's not bad enough, uh, the NRC had an opportunity to make an example out of someone that violated a license. That's bad enough, but it's a license that deals with a site now categorized as the biggest environmental fraud site in U.S. history. Also involving the biggest real estate development in San Francisco in city history since the 1906 earthquake and fire. You figure out the rest. And Lenar, the developer, what relationship did you have with them? None whatsoever other than passing them day, you know, every day or so on the site. Uh, no direct involvement unless they, on one occasion, they had a need to work in an area that was questionable. Rasso called me up from uh, Yorktown, Virginia, asked me if I would go out, look at the area they wanted access, talk to Lenar. Beyond that, minimal, uh, nothing major. And the fact that Tetra Tech, you have two managers in prison, federal prison, and yet it still continues to get contracts with all over the country, uh, how do you explain that? First, I can tell you personally that the two supervisors in prison had nothing to gain by doing that on their own. They, they were not knowledgeable enough to know what the repercussions would be to gain, okay, the advantages to gain. That came from further up the ladder. Uh, they were thrown under the bus. Uh, I'm, 95% sure of that. So sh these top officials of Tetra Tech, do you think they should be investigated and prosecuted? Do you think that they're responsible as well, not just these two managers? I'm, I am of the hopes that people above these supervisors are still being investigated and above Tetra Tech, the company, I hope the entities within the Navy are being looked at within the regulatory entities at the federal, the state, and the city levels because those are the ultimate decision makers and therein is where someone will probably find the source of the problem. Archie Jackson. So Archie, why don't you talk about your role as uh, worker here and what happened to you? Um, I was let go. I was let go and no more work was given to me when I was let go because I had concerns about Hunters Point Shipyard, about the, the false soil sampling and the, and the culture, the way they conduct business at Hunters Point. And what was that culture? Uh, if you say something, they want they, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk as far as like uh, 
because I came from uh, my background. Let me go to let me tell you my background. My background was uh, working at uh, commercial power plants, DOE sites, Department of Defense, and I did that for like approximately 25 years. And when you came here, when was your first experience that something was seriously wrong? Oh man! Wow. What year was that? That was like around 2010, 11, give or take. And there are politicians here, uh, the district attorney, state attorney general, senators. Were they aware? Or how could they not be aware of what was going on? Uh, they must be hiding on our, under a our rock if they don't know what's going on here. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, it's public knowledge now. And you think that the effect of Tetra Tech and firing yourself and other whistleblowers, the, uh, the effect of that is that people are afraid to speak up when they see misdeeds being going on? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. When you talk about what happened in the job, your experience, intimidation and bullying, was that going Yeah, you're not going to be given a job, and um, that's one thing. Uh, I can't think of any others right now, but I imagine it could be pretty severe. And have you been able to... Because this company is very powerful. It's the largest... Yeah, and they have a lot of agencies that stick up for them. So you got the Navy, you got the NRC, and, uh, and it goes on and on. Then you have the state. So a lot of people are afraid to, 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 of being retaliated against. And the state of California has just uh, done a contract with Lennar to clean up the uh, campfire. What do you think that Gavin Newsom, you think he should go along with this contract with, uh, or not with Lennar, with Tetra Tech? Absolutely not. Absolutely. So you don't have any faith no, that Tetra Tech is going to change your way? No, but I mean, if you got a history of, of if you if, if you connect, this is too easy. I mean, you can ask a, a 15-year-old, and they, they would tell you the same answer. They shouldn't be given any more contracts, period. I mean, it's sad. It's sad what I just heard here today about babies dying and about, I was just talking with one of the gentlemen and, and the lady over there about their health issues. It was just really sad. But then again, at Hunter's Point, a lot of people have died. You know, I would say it's a health care emergency. It's a health care emergency. You, you took the thoughts right out of my mind. And, and uh, Congresswoman Pelosi has gotten $42 million in the reconciliation bill in, in Congress for more testing in Hunter's Point and in Treasure Island. Do you think that that money should go again? I mean, we've already spent a billion dollars of tax money trying to... Uh, convert it so it's safe. What are, what are your thoughts about that? Oh wow, man. I mean, first of all, you got you, you have to have you have to have a company that's going to do the right thing. You're going to have to company you're going to have to change. You're going to you're going to have to hire a company that's going to do the right thing and not try to have like a cover up. I'm going to step aside and introduce actually David Anton who is not only a, an attorney um, that's dealing with and you're going to hear about this. Tetra Tech working over at Hunter's Point and cheating. The Navy for, for many years said Tetra Tech did not work here. That's false. Tetra Tech worked here, started working here well before 2012 in planning, in administrative actions, but also in 2012 started actual work in the dirt and work in scanning here at Treasure Island. I have here for some of the news people who want to do some homework, if you approach me afterwards, I'll give you a little piece of paper with a some web a web link of a transcript of a 2012 meeting here on Treasure Island where Lori Lohman talks about her oversight and her role, so you know exactly who she is, and she announces that Tetra Tech is starting to work there, and that's in April 2012. Shaw. Chicago, Bridge and Iron, and Tetra Tech, all engaged in massive cheating here on Treasure Island. Um, Guy? Guy Taby? I described a little bit about his background, but I'll let him tell you. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, came to California in 2001 after about 15 years working at nuclear power plants and national laboratories. I'd worked at McClellan, another Brack base, and it's the same template. Rent, rent the housing out to low-income housing. Let the fire department have a place there. Let the police stay there, and you get a bunch of photo ops. And uh, 
after about six years of that, I was pretty fed up. And I went to work for a company that had some oversight in the Bay Area. And one of the sites was Treasure Island. The other was Hunters Point, as well as Concord and Alameda. And uh, what I encountered at Treasure Island was nothing like I'd seen anywhere, any place. The levels of contamination, radioactive material were off. The, they, they were unbelievable. And I stayed here for a while and decided I needed to be on the other side of the fence. I went to work for the state as a regulator. I figured the state just didn't know what was going on here. And when I went to work for the state, as it turned out, I was able to slow things down for a while, but the management does know what's going on here. The management of the Department of Public Health, who you never hear from, who's actually the, has regulatory authority over this site. Uh, the Department of Toxics, they share it with respect to chemical, but the Department of Public Health, who you'll never see at a RAB meeting or a base meeting, their department doesn't have the folks and they don't supply the folks to come out here and oversee these projects. So even if you were to reach out to those regulators, that support group isn't there. It's a larger problem. It's incredibly systemic uh, throughout the state. There's projects all over the state where this has happened. And um, that's what I have to say. I have a question? Due diligence and all under like attorneys and we should be like following the due diligence of like these things are affecting everybody every one of it, us it's difficult both. to see you see uh, reporters trying hard to bring it to the to public light and you expect that maybe you see it on tv well i worked for the government who, the folks you folks are responsible you folks have to hold those people accountable we found items there's items at Hunters Point that are relatively low levels. I don't want to get into the technical side. Let's say use numbers of two or four would be the highest. We were routinely pulling items out of the ground that were 400 to 800, or two to 400 times that here. When I got to the site, uh, there was a, a storage container. Uh, three feet away from the storage container, you could receive a lethal dose within a couple of hours. Uh, so that material was here. I helped process it originally and get it, some of it off site, but they had excavated behind people's houses and in front of people's houses and backfilled and left the waste underneath people's houses. Is it safe for people to live in an area where there is remediation ongoing like that? No. The companies involved are different. Um, I, I can't speak to how things are uh, how the work is being performed. I can tell you the oversight is the same, and it's non-existent. Are property uh, owners being advised of what's going on behind where the property is? Well, it was if interesting. I'm a owner, I it, want to know what, what's, being, what's contaminating me and my family. Well, one of the issues, when I, when I worked for the state, I kept asking the question, because we were told what consistently mean? that the tenants had been given uh, direction or instructions not to dig in those areas. And we kept asking for copies of those documents, and we got the runaround for years. But when we finally uh, got the person in the meeting to say that person was in charge probably with TIDA, said, I don't know what you're talking about. We didn't inform the people not to dig, or we weren't told by the, by the Navy to not tell them to dig. They own, like, you know, buildings. They should be, like, you know, put the signs. Like, they, I know they do in some places, but, I mean, it's just logic for, you know... This it's not in the best... Toxic Island, instead of Treasure Island, everybody who lives here should be very involved. That's, That's guys, correct. Along with you guys That's correct. Us. Right. I, mean, we, we, we I don't work for the state. Diligence. I don't work for the state anymore. Well, I want that to be clear, but, you're, you're but that group, that group, here. yeah, that group that should be involved, they're not involved. Well, Everybody's supposed to support us as citizens and as residents should be very involved. Sure. That's how it should be happening. Well, the Department because of the Department of Navy. No sense. What's going to happen is the Department of Navy is going sense. to say, "Hang on one second. Yeah, the I Department agree. of Navy is going to say that the work is being done uh, with the approval of the regulatory agencies, the Department of Public Fire Health, Fire. and Toxics." Hang on a second. And that, and I can tell you, that's not being done. So uh, the, at the, the bottom of the ladder and those folks that aren't here, to, to, they work for the Department of Public Health. It's public health and safety, not should the Navy continue the work they're doing. The work that was being done when I came here, I came here as a flyby. I stepped in on one day and saw conditions that were 
and I had the authority in my company, so I took over the site the following work day, and the original manager left. And the work that was being done and how it was being done was counter to every... When I got here, the original excavation was supposed to be a four-foot excavation for a lead PCB remediation. Mm -hmm. And the soil that was coming out of the ground was highly contaminated, and we were finding dozens, if not hundreds of sources, right? Mm -hmm. So they would excavate right to the base of people's houses. And you could still see the debris underneath the people's houses. Right. But they weren't excavating, they weren't continuing to, to remediate and, and, and do the work in accordance with a health physics remediation. They were doing it in accordance with a lead PCB remediation. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, when I left, and there's tons of buildings here, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think the Navy knows exactly. They probably have a rough idea where some other disposal pits are located. Uh, they fight with the, you know, the people in my department to say where that stuff is. They don't admit to it in documents, and they don't. They weren't providing us with a lot of the field data to know what was there, yeah. and nor nor do our bosses want us to come out to these sites to oversee the work. So would it be would it be accurate to say that for the people who are still living here, they are actively in danger? Yes. Okay. Yes. The, the Navy uh, has paid the Department of Public Health to do health and safety surveys. A health and safety survey is a, is a misnomer. It, it's, either, it, you know, it's either contaminated to a specific level or not. Uh, it, health and safety doesn't mean anything. It's just a, what are the, what's, the, what's the condition like in someone's house. That doesn't mean underneath their house is it ridiculously contaminated or uh, that doesn't really mean anything. The, the cleanup criteria is what areas are supposed to be cleaned up to, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, those areas aren't aren't cleaned up to those areas and to those standards and uh, they basically not, try not to admit how far the contamination might go or where the uh, those uh, debris pit boundaries are. Um, th there's no data to support. My understanding is one of the pieces of property though they're very careful they're very tricky with wording. Um, I believe there's one site where they said uh, a site was previously addressed and a prior remediation, and therefore the state may have signed off on agreeing to say it was clean. And but what the what they had done before was cap it, hmm. and uh, so the radioactive chemical contamination is just underground, and they put a cap on it. And a cap is illegal, and this the radioactive material is still there. It's still the property of the military, and it falls under their license. And you can't transfer the process the property without removing the radioactive material or someone has to have a license and accept the license to possess that radioactive material. So if you don't dig it up and take it out of the ground, you know, there's really no pathway to leaving the material here. Right. But they do. But they do. Or they ship it and move it faster than you could say. California is a big state. You know, in other projects I've worked in other states, you have to follow the laws to trans trans to transport material across state lines and follow all those laws. California, you know, these trucks can run roughshod through the state. There's, there's no oversight. Those agencies that are supposed to be doing oversight, aren't, they're not here. Hmm. In other states, you had to file waste manifests long before trucks hit the road. These trucks pick up their material and they're on the road. Mm -hmm. um, Department of Toxics is supposed to have that stuff in their database. You can ask Toxics where the waste manifests are for the material that's going on the road and if it's properly manifested or not. Um, I have no reason, I mean, they, there's new companies on site now, and, and I believe they want to do the right thing, whether they're allowed to do the right thing, I don't know. Um, but uh, at the same time, I'm not sure who anybody can turn to, because uh, you, can't, you can't turn to the state agencies. If they, they, if they come out here and do their job, they will have to admit they were negligent for the last 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what do you do? You can't go to the NRC. The NRC has been here. Uh, they were here when I was a contractor, and they said, this is the state of California's jurisdiction. There's people living here. There's a, you know, the, if there's an issue, the police and the fire department. Um, and sorry, N NRC, can you just say? Oh, the Nuclear that? Regulatory Commission? Right. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the federal agency. The state of California is an agreement state. In other words, we agree to abide by the same rules or we need to be as strict or stricter right. than the NRC. So if somebody makes a complaint and the NRC comes out here, they say, we don't have jurisdiction here. The state of California does. Mm -hmm. Their agencies need to oversee this work. 
otherwise there it's a, it's a jurisdictional it's kind of a jurisdictional gray area right. now a lot of the contractors will say this is federal property the state doesn't belong here but the state the state is has, is responsible the department of public health is responsible for the radioactive waste here as the department of toxics is responsible for the chemical waste here and i don't know if we have any idea what the extent of the chemical waste is here i have no way of knowing um, that's a that's a scary thought considering the type of illnesses people have but um, I, I, I'm sure the radioactive material exists under these locations. They haven't been addressed. Uh, they can't possibly have addressed because they don't. They don't admit to it in their in the revisions of their documents that they're supposed to. Their uh, historic radiological assessments aren't aren't done. They weren't done in a in a in a proper way. They weren't. They didn't seem to be reviewed and approved in a proper way. And a revision uh, that we'd pushed for for. Uh, close to a decade was done and I don't think that was reviewed and approved in a proper way with respect to the rules of base realignment closure. Right. If you looked at that document and looked at the review cycle of that document you would say this this isn't done the way other documents are done and it's a foundational document. They take that document, sorry, they take that document and they 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 do work and write contracts based on those documents so if you don't admit that there's the material here on the ground they just say, well, we're doing the doc. That we're doing the work in accordance with the HRA and the contractor. We write the contracts for that, and you know, so and and that HRA was signed off by those regulatory agencies. There's no place to go. Right. So it's a sort of an impossible position for people. To it is. They see people. We see it on the news, and a lot of folks do a great job in reporting on it, and they assume what someone's going to. You see it on TV, and people assume someone's going to step in and do something about it but those agencies would just have to they would just have to admit that they're complicit if they stepped in and did anything about it so and they've watered down the talent you know if I could say talent in those in those departments in those agencies so the ability to to oversee that work just it's not there it's not there so toxics is toxics is the lead agency for all these sites but when they're rad sites the Department of Public Health is supposed to be the lead agency right but they're not so it seems to me like a situation of everyone saying this is your responsibility, this is your responsibility, but it really taking no one taking any responsibility. Well, it's set up. It's set up well. The Navy gets to point to toxics in the Department of Public and toxics will point to the Department of Public Health and say it's your jurisdiction, mm -hmm. but then the Department of Public Health doesn't get what they need and they're not allowed to do their jobs to oversee the projects. So, uh, you know, those some of those people. Uh, uh, our, our managers uh, retire, you know, I, I, if I throw names out, like Kelvin Yamada was my boss's boss's boss, mm -hmm. and he's, uh, my understanding, he's, he's not a health physicist, but for him to be involved in the process of uh, uh, pushing an agenda on the personnel at, at, at its responsibility to review this work, uh, and to make those maneuvers with respect to hiring and firing and things like that, um, you know, that's where this all comes from. And those people get lots of money from the Department of Defense to support these projects. So, you know, that's job security for them. Right. Um, but those, those agencies are the only agencies where smarter people, usually you're in a job and the, the PhDs and the smarter people are your, are your bosses, They're the health physicists are your bosses, but they end up being people with no experience, they're just managers. They might have experience in other specialties you know that some of the jobs in the department of public health need but specifically not for these types of this type of work here at uh, treasure island yeah i was a, i was a contractor mm -hmm. yeah i worked for a contractor here and what, what happened what was your experience um I, I just observed uh work being done in a way i'd never seen done anywhere else and you've worked all over the country most of the country yeah so 15, over 15 years outside of california I came to California in 2001 to do a project, a short project at McClellan, ended up staying there five or six years. It's the same situation. It's a BRAC base um, where they allow low-income housing and they give a piece of property to a police department, a fire department, and, you know, it gets protected uh, because politicians, want, you know, they want to say, oh, there's low-income housing, but it basically provides cover for the development, and you don't really want to kick everybody out to go dig up under what's what might be underneath their houses. And it allows the it allows the BRAC process to to move forward and the property transfer to move forward without cleanup ever actually being completed. So you're saying this is not just a problem here at Treasure Island Hunters Point. This is a national problem where this redevelopment of Superfund sites like this 
aren't really being properly cleaned up and well, uh, if, as you look at the, if you look at how many BRAC bases or how many BRAC cleanup sites there are in the country and the latest round of BRAC you'll see a lot of states with a couple of sites five six maybe seven I think California has 28 so uh, you know four times or four times what other states have and there Treasure Island, Hunters Point, Alameda, Concord those are all significantly impacted sites and they're also prime real estate so and, and the math is pretty easy. And how could the Navy say that there weren't any safety problems here? There wasn't any problem of radioactivity? Well, they're going to point to the Department of Public Health and say all the work, you know, they reviewed and approved those documents and they, uh, uh, and they signed off on those documents. So um, uh, they're going to point to the Department of Public Health as being their regulators and having them having approved the work. And Gavin Newsom is the new governor of California. Do you think anything's going to be any different? Uh, I have no way of knowing other than uh, I believe they they changed the head of Cal EPA relatively soon after he became governor, and I think that person worked in the city of San Francisco beforehand that might have been involved in TIDA. If I remember correctly, I'm not really positive, but um, you know it, it takes a bunch of moving parts to make this all happen. And while these. Uh whistleblowers were talking about the falsification of testing, the serious systemic problems. You had in San Francisco uh, the district attorney Kamala Harris, uh, you had uh, Ed Lee, I mean you had Gavin Newsom who was mayor when this was going on and when people were being uh, fired, bullied to be silent about what's going on. What does that say about the accountability of uh, representatives who are supposed to make sure these agencies work properly? It, it's difficult to speak to the accountability at that level. All I, all I would say is that if we were to uh, pursue our, you know, push our, our jobs the way we're supposed to do our jobs at the state level, the phone calls would ring down from above saying, hey, you need to get these people to back off. And I, I don't know specifically where those phone calls would come from. I could just, you know, tell you that they might be my a supervisor four levels up from me that says, hey, you need to, you know, what can we do here to, to move this forward or, or you know, uh, they've done this, but this wasn't acceptable. What can we do to kind of meet in the middle? But this is these the numbers and the cleanup is not. It, it, it's not something that you. Uh, it's not something that you negotiate. It's either cleaned up to the levels that are the standards that are set and the stakeholders agree to, or it's not. And um, the the military is responsible for the rad material from cradle to grave. You'll hear them say that all the time. But uh, as long as those regulatory agencies are are, are, getting, are being compensated for uh, uh, oversight of those, of those projects, then those, they're going to have an agenda to let them move forward with what they do. And a billion dollars has been spent on the cleanup here at Hunters Point and Treasure Island. What, what in the hell happened? <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of money These, to be spent on a cleanup. I mean, to... Okay. I, I've, I've worked at decommissioning nuclear power plants. They're not, they're not inexpensive. Uh, uh, activities. They cost a lot of money. Uh, it was okay to put the stuff in the ground back then, but the procedures and processes now su are such that you're supposed to clean it up. You need to dig it up. Uh, and I, I don't just mean dig it up. I mean, there's very specific protocols. You need to follow the Code of Federal Regulations and the BRAC process and, and all those rules and requirements of the state and the Fed that have, uh, and, these, and these processes have taken years to work out. But they've abandoned those processes at, at these bases. Otherwise, we wouldn't be standing here having this conversation. So the, you're, you're saying that they ignored their own rules to just proceed with the development of this project? Yes, certainly. Yeah, I think I kind of thought that. I kind of think that's obvious. And there, do you the, think the there should the amount of radioactive material that I've seen pulled out of the ground here at this site is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's not a regular environmental project. Usually, you see low-level numbers. Here, you see numbers that are astronomical. What kind of numbers? Uh, I, I honestly I don't want to throw terms out there, but just let's say hundreds of times the values that you'd see at Hunter's Point. So this is even more contaminated than at Hunter's Point. Yes. Right why, why is that? Uh, just the work that they did here. What was that? Uh, I, I'm not sure. There's a lot of, uh, th there's no admission, but there's a lot of evidence of a lot of uh, radium contamination at this base. Like, re incredible amounts of radium contamination at this base. More so than I've seen at a lot of other, uh, at other bases. So, uh, and this was a training facility for Navy for nuclear war or decontamination? Yes, it was. Yeah. 
during wartime, there was a you know there was a lot of work done at these bases that that was okay to do. It supported the war effort, but we know a lot more about health and safety than we did back in the fifties. They built a ship. They built a ship here called the Pandemonium. Yeah, I know. You know about that? that? Why don't you talk about that? What is that ship? The Pandemonium was a uh, a mock vessel that was uh, used to my understanding it was used to practice decontamination, and it was at one location. Then it was moved to another site. Uh, at, at the corner long you know, many many years ago and uh, they used to contaminate the sides of the of the of the you know mock vessel and then scrub it clean and survey it and that's my understanding of the use of the pandemonium it wasn't a vessel it was a mock training you know area um, but we had pushed hard to shut down work here uh, back in the uh, late 2000s, 2009 and 2010, and we were able to do that because I had just come from the site, so we were able to ask a lot of questions. The contractor there wasn't supposed to touch the pandemonium. The pandemonium was a, was a potential rad site. It had been identified in the first HRA as a potential site, and that person that uh, uh, the lawyer up there spoke to, uh, spoke about, Lori Lohman, uh, she was in charge of RASO, and in a meeting with Lori Lohman, um, I had heard that the contractor had ripped and shipped that pan the pandemonium site without rad controls or procedures. And I asked Lori Lohman about it in a meeting with other people. And she said, when that, when we do work on the pandemonium, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you. And then we disclosed to them that we thought that that work had already done, had been done. And the contractor online said, we've already ripped and shipped the pandemonium. And she was very upset about it and said they would get back to us on, because we wanted to know where the waste went and you know what, what kind of controls were in place. Did they contaminate more parts of the island? We had no way to know. Um, but we, we, we didn't get, uh, we never got any information on what happened. She never came forth and, Rasso never came forth and told us what, ha what, the, what the work, uh, how the work was finished up or, what was done, where the material was shipped. So there was no documentation. So you're saying that the, the trucks are going back and forth here. There are massive piles of dirt, of, of stuff here. You're saying that the trucks were not properly certified to carry this material out. And where is the material? Where has it been sent? You're saying that that whole uh, that regulatory happened. process, which is supposed to protect the public, has Correct. broken down. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that, that, it was like that when I got here. And it, and it stayed that way uh, for a while, and we tried to rectify it, and, and, uh, and I, I, I don't want to make that sound like an excuse, it was that way when I got here, but they had been doing it. They had been transporting radioactive and chemical, chemically contaminated soil in trucks that weren't, you know, we, we had to come here to the, the, in our first days here and try to get the, all this work to stop. and and try to put some uh, uh, standards in place to, to comply with the law. You were concerned that, that the, oh, sa the safety of the public was... Yes, and, and, and my workers, the people that worked for my company, too. Um, you know, we had issues of, uh, of high exposure on some personnel that we didn't expect when we started to say, hey, wait a second, what's going on here? And, you know, as soon as we realized there were issues here, we, we did our best to stop work. And that company was booted off the island. I, I had since left uh, and to, to go work for the state, but that company was uh, pretty much dissected by the Navy. They, they're out of business. And they had contracts at all these sites. They were people that kind of knew what they were doing. There were state agencies, you were saying, that are responsible for this, even though they go back and forth about who's responsible. But in California, there's really no What's back and forth. The Department, of, the Department of Public Health has jurisdiction over this site. Um, the state, the, the Bureau of Land Use Management had had conferred the or conveyed the, uh, uh, the that the laws of the state of California apply to Treasure Island. Um, I had asked the Navy many times uh, why they don't just have this declared a Superfund site. I think the reason would be that the, the, the blowback from that is usually that Superfund sites, they don't let people live on Superfund sites. They'd have to kick everybody off the island. I don't think the Navy wanted to do that. That would be admitting that there was an issue here. And they'd already gotten away with it so far, so they weren't going to allow that to happen. Um, and then, um, so... The, so you have the Department of Public Health who has jurisdiction over the RAD, and you have the Department of Toxic, 
who has jurisdiction over the chemical. And they do original assessments and they call these issues chemically contaminated. The Department of Toxics has, uh, has jurisdiction when it's a chemically contaminated site, but as soon as it's a RAD site, then the Department of Public Health is supposed to step in. But what they do is they do work as a consultant. They call it as a consultant, but there's a, some type of memorandum where the, where the money kind of flows through toxics to the Department of Public Health. But the Department of Public Health is supposed to step up and, and have oversight on these bases. But you won't, you'll never see them the here. You, know, you don't see them at meetings. You don't see them overseeing the work. So um, who's doing this job? It's, uh, isn't the responsibility of the state of California to do this through these agencies? Yes, I, you, I, they, they are, they're obviously not here doing their job. It wouldn't be in this, the situation that it is now. But they're well compensated by the Department of Defense. They, they, they provide funds to the Department of Toxics for their, for their management of these projects, and then some money flows through the Department of Public Health for their management of their personnel and oversight of the documents. But as far as who has jurisdiction, and who has the authority to come here and stop all this, yeah, those two agencies could do that in a heartbeat, but they, they don't. And the idea of building condos, building housing on a nuclear radioactive dump site, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't believe the laws of the state of California allow uh, a radioactive disposal site to be transferred. Um, uh, they, uh, that radioactive material belongs to the Navy. In this case, it belongs to the Navy, and in other cases, it belongs to the you know might belong to the Air Force. They're responsible th for that material cradle to grave, and it has to get moved off a of site, you know, remediated correctly before the state will sign off on transferring the property. So uh, uh, those those rules have been set forth, and, and agreements have been made as to the levels of of cleanup. Um, keep holding them accountable to those levels of cleanup are a different thing. Uh, this this mountain of soil right here, just this keeps getting bigger and bigger. And from my understanding, this is just the beginning of the super compaction for the development of the island. Well, and we were told years ago that that wasn't going to happen until the island was clean. But they're obviously they've been moving full steam ahead since you know for. So all this day. soil is is not even covered. Are you? Is there a danger with all this? Soil and I, I would think so. I, I, I can't see, I, I don't know where this soil came from uh, that's, that's being mounded up here. And I don't know, uh, I don't know, uh, we, don't, we, we tried to get that information as far as the other excavations going on at the site when I worked for the state, but we were never provided that. We wanted to know, well, well where, where else are you digging on the site? And all this work was going on and we weren't told of it. So you worked for the state? But our bosses weren't going to let you know weren't going to let us push that issue. They, they weren't interested in pursuing it. Correct. And how long did you work for the state of California? About eight years. And what did other people have concerns in the state of California about what was going on? Uh, that I, I don't know. Um, I, I think the the management uh, had their agenda, and their agenda was to to provide cover for the for BRAC to do to do what they do, and. Uh, they needed to hire and support people that were are supposed to do their jobs here, but that didn't that didn't really happen. Obviously, now, you say they're comp a handful of people in the Department of Public Health that are even in the department that have any uh, uh, any and and even the Department of Public Health would argue who has you know what their role is in their jurisdiction or authority, but it doesn't really. It's pretty clear cut. The jurisdiction is theirs. They just you say, but there are 28 sites in California. I believe if you were to look up, if you were to go online and look up how many BRAC sites were identified, uh, you know they might not be bases, but they might be sites. I think there's 28 sites in California that were in that round of BRAC. Now, now they're you say they're compacting the soil. Uh, this is a fill well, landfill. It's, it's just what it appears to be for me. It's, it's, it looks like super compaction that. It just it just appears that way to me. I I can't I, I can't guess what this what this process is, but I understand that a super compaction had to occur for the island to be developed. For but what about liquefaction? Well, I think that's what the super compaction was for to 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 uh, protect against liquefaction. So uh, my understanding from the developers that's that had to happen, but I didn't we weren't under we didn't know that this was all going to take place, this, uh, this uh, large amount of soil, this mountain of soil. Just, it could be on top of other areas that might be
considered impacted, but we'd never know it. And the state would have to tell them to move this soil to find out if there's radioactive waste underneath it and, and chemical and, waste. There's no way to know. And that job hasn't been done. So. Oh, no, that's not. Yeah. No one's going to... Then, you have, it, 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 there's multiple layers. The Navy has to admit that this, the material's there. The state has to hold them to account for the materials there. And then they have to oversee the work that's done to ensure that the work's being done correctly. You know what happened at Hunter's Point with respect to Tetratech. That's obvious uh, why anyone would think it doesn't happen everywhere else. Uh, this would be astounding.